Okay, so in the last video, we brought in my ink sketch. I'll just go through the steps really quickly. I made a drawing with pencil of my spot illustration idea. It's like a Halloween version of my little pony that's melting and disgusting. And then I inked over it just with tracing paper and a permanent ink pen and scanned that. I'm just waiting for those to open. Then I brought that scan into Illustrator. So that's my pencil line. That's my scanned ink. But the problem with scanning ink is it's still raster, right? And even when you try to get a really clean high-res scan, you'll get a lot of this <coughs> and variety, which just doesn't look very clean. And that's okay for some printing jobs, like that's okay for a newspaper editorial cartoon, but it wouldn't be okay for a spot illustration that's going to be printed at 300 pixels per inch on a poster, say. So then I brought that inked scan into Illustrator and live traced it using the black and white tracing setting and then ignoring the white so that I got vector line work and then I expanded that. And so now you can see that here. Let me move it on top of the gray so you can see that there's no white in there. Now my sketch has quite a bit, or my line work has quite a bit going on, but Illustrator did a really lovely job smoothing it all out. And because it's not a logo design, I don't need to be quite so picky about how clean every line and shape is. But I might want to add things to it. I might want to change it up. Or I might just want to freehand draw something else, right? Or fill in gaps. Now, we learned with the logo project that you can do that with the pencil tool, especially if you're using a tablet. So for instance, if I wanted this little mark to be smaller, I'm simply going to, in Illustrator, once it's outputted as a vector, once I can see all these anchor points with the small selection tool, very important to use the small selection tool, I can click that and I can use the pencil tool, which is in this drawer, hold down command to get back to the small selection tool to click it and see the anchors. I can use command plus to zoom in anytime and you see how it has that little jog there? I just want to smooth that out and change it. And if I want my pencil tool to be more accurate and less smooth, I can do that here. And that will be even more sensitive to all my little movements. Because this isn't a logo, sometimes you want more complex shapes. And if you want to smooth it out, as long as you can see those anchors, you can use the smooth tool and you can average, right? And on and on and on. Now, what if I want to add something to it? Like I want to fill in some of this eye socket. I can hold down command, click on it and think, okay, where do I want more, more inking, more line work? I have a lot of it on the snake. So I could use the pencil tool and I could draw, not redraw existing shapes, but actually draw in little shapes to kind of fill in the eye and close them and then fill them with black, right? I could do that, but I'm gonna teach you a new tool which works even better and it's called the blob brush tool. And this is the my preferred tool for something that's the closest as a vector to digital inking. Now to do that, I'm gonna show you an alternate way. So let's say I never inked this on paper. So let me save that work and let's go back to this sketch, this pencil sketch. What if I could bring this into Illustrator, like I did at the beginning of my uh, extinct tweet logo example, and then could just ink over the top of it in Illustrator with vector shapes, like I'm using an inking pen. 
So to do that, I need to open the sketch, the pencil sketch in Illustrator. Now, honestly, this is a complicated enough illustration that I don't think that's the most cost efficient and time, time uh, saving way for me to show it to you. But I'll be able to show you a piece of it this way. And it will turn out results, you know, just as good as, as the live tracing of a good ink scan. It just will take longer in this, in this instance. So the first thing I do, I'm not going to live trace this. It's pencil, it would not live trace well. But what I am going to do is double click on it on the layer and then say dim images to 50% and then lock it. So that's called onion skinning. And that, that shows it to me as a guide. And now I can ink on top. I'm going to do that in a new layer. I'm going to turn off my image trace options. And you'll notice between this and the, uh, the live traced one, which is here, live trace is always going to make some decisions. Whoops, lost my new marks. I'm going to put it back on white so you can see. It simplified for me. Like the little bloodshot things in the eyes. It simplifies a lot for me. It's not bad, and I'm starting to kind of add things in. But if I want total control, I'm just going to, to digitally ink my vectors right on top. So you're going to use the paintbrush tool, but you're not going to use the regular paintbrush tool. You're going to use the blob brush tool. So what's the difference? The paintbrush tool is an old tool in Illustrator. And it's based on strokes. The blob brush tool is a new tool in Illustrator that's based more on what a brush is like in Photoshop. So I don't want to create stro strokes with different thicknesses because those are outlines. I want to have filled paths just like I drew with my pencil. But I want to be able to set the blob brush settings by double clicking on it to be pressure sensitive, right? So the size should be pressure sensitive. I don't need it to be 90. That was way too big. Instead, I'm going to make it like 25. I'm just using a small bamboo Wacom tablet. And then I want my variation to be maybe about 20 points. If you have a better tablet, you can also set the angle and the bearing because that's called tilt and twirl sensitivity. So if I do that now and I push, you can see how it gives me a big smeary ink. Now it shows me I want my size to be even smaller. And now I can start inking. And it works really pretty smoothly, and it will clean up your work as you go. Now, what's amazing about the blob brush that the other tools in Illustrator don't do, it's kind of like a reverse eraser tool. You can set it to be pressure sensitive, right? You can always hit Command-Z and go backwards. But it will always add to the shape. So it's not creating a lot of new paths. That's why it's called a blob brush. Instead, it's blobbing your old mark in with your new marks. And it's like you're actually... Um, painting with a with paper and making these cutouts. Right? I want to tighten my line work a little bit more. I'll reduce the size. See how I can go thick to thin. Right? And you see how it smoothed it out. So it can actually steady my hand. I can also set it to be even more smooth if I want. I have it right in the middle right now. So then for these little embellishments, to show the bloodshot eyes, 
with black ink. Remember, we're going to be adding color later. This is just the line work. But you can see how much of a variation I can get and still keep them all as a vector. They're perfectly clean at any scale. Okay, so this actually can be a lot of fun just to freehand and play with. The blob brush tool. The one thing it's not great at is making hard edges, right? You see how it curves things really beautifully. It's great for inking organic things. This is very organic. But when I get up to those gemstones, it's going to be a little tough to keep my lines straight. Like up here. So for that, I might use the pen tool because this is putting down a lot of anchor points each time. Use the small selecting tool to show you those. But what I love about it is it will just keep adding to the same cutout. And you can set whether you want it more smooth or more accurate. And for those, I mean, I meet people sometimes and I work with students sometimes that are very used to doing digital illustration and do commissions for friends and have a lot in their portfolio, but it's all through Photoshop. And I used to be that way and Photoshop's fantastic. And they'll digitally ink and draw in Photoshop. And this is no different than that. <laughs> so if you're able to digitally ink in Photoshop, you're better off digitally inking an illustrator because then your line work is vectorized and then it's perfectly clean and can be scaled to any size. And so as the versatility of being able to be a, a billboard or a print illustration or a t-shirt design, silk screen, whatever it might be, without any extra work. You can also just ink and t give tones and, and uh, definition with the blob brush, right? And then you can just turn off the sketch underneath and you can see what the line work's doing. So when I do cartoons for newspapers, when I do uh, editorial illustrations, especially ones that are just black and white, I don't tend to draw them. There's only been a few occasions where I've drawn them and inked them on the computer. And that's not because I don't like the way you can ink and draw on the computer. It's just because it changes my, my approach a little bit. <laughs> but I'm of an older generation that, that still likes paper, right? And there's definitely a, a new generation of, of artists that just prefer to do everything sketching onwards on the screen whether it's through like an iPad and Procreate or whether it's through Photoshop or whether it's, it's through a surface and different types of styluses or a Cintiq tablet, whatever works for you and whatever gives you the most control of your process is the appropriate choice. But I want to show you these other ways of using Illustrator. Now, I also love that I can just get really kind of thick um, shadowed lines, just like you can with a brush. So it's even better. Blob brush is even better in many ways than using a Sharpie or using a technical pen, because you can make it go really thick if you need to, just by pushing a little bit harder. And if you don't want it to go thick and thin like I'm using, you simply set the variation not to be very much, and then it will be a technical pen. And of course, just like the live traced shapes, you can go back and then adjust everything using the pencil tool, using the smooth tool, using the pen tool. Uh, adjusting curves, so on and so forth. So I'd like everyone to try out the blob brush with their tablet.
especially if you're not very